This program will discard previous files and access the selected files to the following ship archive. Stand by for connection. Connection established. Hello, user. I am the Calridian's Shipboard Artificial Intelligence Liaison, or SAIL. My job is to ensure the higher functions of the ship and assist crew in any capacity my programming allows. Stand by for crew archive access. Scanning local roster. Personnel file located. Captain Nathaniel Cooper. Martian born, August 16th, 2650. 27 years old by Earth calendar. 15.38 years old by Martian calendar. Born and raised in Tharsis City, but spent four years on Earth studying abroad. Had no choice but to learn to shoot when he was 15 when bears were introduced into the Martian ecosystem. Majored in astrophysics with ambition to join the United Space corporate military. In 2666, his feelings toward the USCM began to change when his brother, Jason Cooper, died during protests. Exploitation of the sovereign colonies had been leading to civil unease and a greater military presence among the general public. With talk of open rebellion circulating, Nate took matters into his own hands. In 2667, he procured a Condor-class freighter from the Tharsis shipyards with a number of like-minded people and friends willing to follow him. With the aid of various rebel cells, this ship was brought up to combat standards, dubbed the Calridian, and started undertaking missions for the growing resistance. Nate adapted well to ship life, not only proving himself early on as a captain, but also a competent field commander. Through various accomplishments and a lengthy service record, Captain Nate and the crew of the Calridian became renowned for their resourcefulness, combat effectiveness, and performance throughout the nine-year conflict now referred to as the Milky Way Civil War. They would prove themselves to be a large influence in major battles, including the First and Second Battle of Aegis, the Battle of Parliament Station, the Siege of Arcadia, the Mars Fleet Crisis, Commander Miller's Run, Operation Vulcan, and the Fall of Luna. After the capitulation of Earth and the disbandment of the USCM in 2676, the Calridian and its crew redesignated themselves as civilian contractors for the newly reformed Terran military, often undertaking mop-up operations fighting remnant forces, running cargo, and other missions across the galaxy. The year is now 2677. One year since the war's end, the galaxy is in a fragile state of healing from nearly a decade of conflict. Behind the scenes, Nate and his crew continue to fight. Anything and anyone who would seek to plunge the galaxy back into chaos. The road ahead is long, but filled with wonder, danger, discovery, and camaraderie, and the endless call of the cosmos. Won't you come and fly away with us? Why are there two chat windows? <laughs> who, who put two chat windows on the ship? Hang on. There we go. That's better. Wait, is it? I think the other one was bigger. That was never my favorite spot for the chat window, by the way. It's just... <laughs> uh, hi, by the way. 
How we how 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 how's everybody doing? <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. So this is it. This is the thing. <laughs> welcome. I'm not gonna say something cheesy like uh, "Welcome aboard" or uh, "We are go for launch" or anything like that. Let's just keep it. Uh, let's just keep it casual. Whoever did that, you're fired. It won't be long to. It won't take long to narrow down who did that. There's only like 23 people on this ship. Wait, is there 23? I'm the captain of this dang ship, and uh, I don't know how many people are on my ship. Hang on, where's my crew manifest? Which is a thing that I have. There are 23 of us. I had that right. <laughs> Look, it's 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 not the easiest thing in the world captaining a spaceship. Turns out there's a lot of things that go into it, especially a rust bucket of this caliber. Can we get the music? Thank you. <laughs> captain moment? Yes, captain moment. I am a captain. Captain Nate Cooper. Or Nathaniel, if you insist on using my full name. Most people just call me Nate. <laughs> yeah, this has been... Uh, it has been two months since we started hinting at this. I think it was back when the horse was doing um, Just Cause 3? The year is 2677. What Titanic do we have? I don't think we have any Titanics floating around. It, 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 hang on, I'll ask. Uh, Donna! Donna, do we have any Titanics this year? That's a no. Alright, she's telling me no. <laughs> Uh, there's like three people off to the side there. Um, one of them has cue cards. One of them is doing the lights in here. The horse had to fly away. Yeah, that's what I hear. The horse had to go. His planet needed him. So that was interesting. <laughs> Raging chief engineer sound in the background. Uh, no, uh, chief engineer is downstairs actually. Uh, I'm actually, well, actually, we're going to be going into that, the lore of the ship and uh, the lore of yours, truly. Okay, so the size of my pupils has been wired into my eyebrows. So every time I do this, my eyes get really small. Okay. <laughs> Have you heard of the M1K Classic? It's a coil gun of the M1 Garant. That sounds like something I would use. <laughs> that That's probably going to pop up in the Q&A. Hey, what guns have you used? <laughs> yeah, just save that question for... Um, Just gonna save that question for uh, for the Q and A segment. There will be a Q and A segment. Yeah. Small eyes, yes. Small eyes. You're gonna be seeing a lot of this because I don't really have control over that. <laughs> yes, this model was put together by a now very good friend of mine on. I believe I found him through Discord, actually. This was a, this model was uh, created by Ordekai. That's Ordekai VT on uh, Twitter. I think his link is actually in the description. It is in the description. It's right there below the chat rules. But yes, they worked very hard 
on this model. And, uh, we gotta, let's go ahead and do the, uh, model showcase. Because, uh, there is a lot of things that this model can do. Okay, so first of all, this is me. I think I can do. I, I I think I can make the resolution on that better, but uh, well, actually, yes, I can. In fact, you know what? I'm just gonna fit to screen. I should have done this a long time ago. All right, that's that's a lot better. Actually, they did a good job. They did a fantastic job, considering. Um, well, actually, the actual model art was done by... Uh, now I gotta look stuff up again. <laughs> the actual concept art was done by a... Incredibly talented person on Fiverr. Uh, it was done by Ink Garden. Two ends. Uh, which is, uh, fantastic, considering all they had to go off of was, uh, pixel art? And a couple clothing references. It's on the ref sheet, I can, like, I, on the next screen I can show you what I actually sent him. Tall motherfucker? I am not that tall. Actually. I am three... F no, not three foot. That's the other guy. I am five foot eleven. Five foot eleven, I will forever say, is the perfect height. Because that is just tall enough to be considered tall. But it's just short enough to uh, be accepted by NASA's six foot height limit. Because NASA has a six foot height limit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, this model does uh, quite a bit, actually. Let me show you uh, some of the amazing features on this model. Right. Okay, so first of all, we have a helmet. I am a space rebel. I was one of the founding members of the Rebellion. So obviously, we need a helmet. Now... Also, along with the helmet, I could take I could actually take that vest off. <laughs> That's not big for someone on Mars. Okay, I underwent gene therapy. Yours truly studied abroad on Earth for five years, so I underwent the gene therapy so that Earth's gravity doesn't kill me. <laughs> It's it, it it it's nothing invasive. It's like a pill. It's I'm living in uh, I'm living in the 2600s, guys. Me, me, med medical technology has come a long way. But anyway, I could take the vest off. But also, I'm a space rebel, so obviously I need a gun. <laughs> Favorite room of the Calridian? Um, probably my room. This room. I call it the loft because it's uh, way up the top of the ship and towards the back. Anyway, um, and I can do this um, a, 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 in any combination, by the way. I could have all of them on. I could take the helmet off. I could just have nothing on at all. I could just have the gun. <laughs> All these various toggles that I can have. <laughs> uh, also, I can pull the gun off my back. <laughs> this is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> Maybe see the bridge? Um, not yet. We didn't actually make art for the bridge. Maybe one day. <laughs> By the way, that lore video goes up on the channel in eight minutes. 
The bridge isn't rendered. Nah, the bridge isn't rendered. We got pixel art of the bridge. You saw it in the lore video. <laughs> anyway, um, a couple other toggles. I have a universal game controller. It's like a universal remote. It, it works on every TV in your house. Only this works on every console on the ship. <laughs> so, like, um, whatever we're playing, this will work on it. Really, I just swapped the wire out. It, 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 it It's no big deal. <laughs> anyway, we also have... My really serious face. Or alternatively. Yeah, I think we're going to get a lot, of, a lot of use out of this toggle. <laughs> There's a couple more uh, emote faces, like... Oh, Miss Natsuki, you're trying to seduce me! <laughs> I can have those both on at the same time, by the way. Now it just looks like I'm kind of sick. <laughs> Embarrassed or flustered? Yes, exactly. We're gonna, I, I think we're going to get a lot of use out of that, but also, uh, that's not all. I have nine buttons on this uh, number pad, and all of them do something. Like my angry face. It doesn't have to be angry. It could just be a upset with you. My disapproving glance. I'm sick of your shit. Something along those lines. I could make it even angrier. Or I could just make myself red. Just angry until I'm red in the face. Red and blue in the face. You think you could get me a full image of the pixel bridge? I could get you a full image of the, uh... I could get you a full image of the entire ship, but I think we'd have to clean it up a little bit first. You seriously underestimate our cleaning skills here on board. <laughs> Drunk and pissed? Oh. I didn't even think of that. This could be a drug face. We have a lot to drink about on this ship. I mean, we have a bar! We hollowed out we we hollowed out a part of the back room and uh, yeah we have a bar on this ship. But anyway, there's one more toggle, and I really really like this one. That's all it does. <laughs> PlayStation never changed their PS5 controller since then. Hey! Hey! This... This is retro! This is some really retro stuff here. Things that are antique. You think the PS5 is rare in your time? Guess what? It's even rarer now! <laughs> <laughs> it's it, I go crazy. There's a lot of consoles on this ship, including a PS2, 3, 4, and 5. There's also an Xbox 360. The white one. Yes, surprisingly, it still works. 
So yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> There's a GameCube here somewhere. I think it. I think it's on the floor. It is on the floor. So we do have that. There's a Wii, but it's not set up. But we have it. We have a Wii. There's a Switch. All of these are very rare. There's a NES here somewhere too, but uh, I, I, I don't. I don't know where it is. I think Danny has it over there somewhere. <laughs> uh, what other consoles do we have on this ship? I don't know. I would have to ask Keen. Keen's the quartermaster. He knows what, he knows everything that's on this ship. I could go to Keen right now and ask him how many pencils do we have? <laughs> how many space pens do we have? The infamous NASA space pen which NASA spent millions of dollars developing. We need to lay off NASA for the space pen, by the way. That's a common misconception. They did not spend millions of dollars developing a space pen just so that the Russians could just so that the Russians could one up us by using a pencil. America also used pencils. The pen was just a really nice bonus. How many space mugs do I have? That is an important question, Gavin. And we're going to save it for the Q&A. Now I have to stall for around about a minute because at 6 o'clock the lore video goes up. And uh, then we can move on to the next segment of the presentation. We got a, we got a whole thing uh, lined up today. A uh, lot of announcements, a lot of uh, lore drops. I am very excited for you guys to learn all about this universe of mine. Because Head of Production started writing this back in 2013. Or at least that's, that's when the initial idea came in. It has been several years... But, uh, yeah. I'm here f not finally, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's six o'clock. Now we can, uh, move on to the next, the next part of the show. Now, I probably messed up, uh, the model placement, uh, for this next screen, but, uh, here we go. Let's see what happens. No, this is fine, actually. This is okay. I just moved myself over to the side in a little bit. So, this is a thing that, uh, I, I am to understand that VTuber debuts typically go over their likes and dislikes. And seeing as how, um, unlike the horse, we're gonna do this debut properly. And actually, this image is not the fully up-to-date image. Let me just get the up-to-date slides. What the heck is this folder? What the heck is this folder? Wes, what the heck is this folder? What? No, you're the one that set this up. <laughs> it's Wes's fault. Everybody blame Wes. But don't blame him too heavily, alright? He's having a hard time. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is the up-to-date slide. All right, so, likes and dislikes. We'll start with the likes. Gaming, obviously. That's like, like number one. Tabletop. We do have our uh, Dungeons and Dorkheads show on this channel. And uh, we are using the rebrands as an excuse to switch things up a little bit. There's still episodes that are going to air before uh, things get switched up, but, um, yeah. And also, one of my goals is to um, have a VTube group 
with a live campaign. Because another thing you guys uh, may not know, we actually have a D&D &D den down in the cargo hold. Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> I don't usually participate myself until recently. I've been known to dabble. Anyway, scooters. Scooters are a big one. I have a nice scooter. I like scooters. I personally have a modified Honey Star 50, which is great when uh, we're actually in port and we can drive it around. For the more barren planets, we have a pair of hover bikes, which are good for carrying a combined four people on the two of them. But yeah. Motorcycle step? Oh, God. Okay, there is a difference between motorcycle and scooter. I implore you! Please get it right. <laughs> because those motorcycle bastards make us look bad. Scooters, you look at a scooter and it's like, oh, well, that's a delightful little means of transportation. And then, and then you look at a motorcycle and it's like, oh, God. I've gone deaf because Harley motorcycles have been specifically designed to be as freaking loud as humanly possible. And those other super bikes are also obnoxiously loud. I should have put motorcycles on the dislikes. And in hindsight, I was putting this together last night and I should have put motorcycles on the dislikes side of things. You know what? Hang on. I'll fix it. Give me one second. Give me one second. I'm gonna fix this. Where is that slide? Here it is. Uh, okay, open it up in uh, the editor. Uh, any art of what the hover bikes look like? Uh, no, but the, it, that is gonna happen. What the heck was that? I think that was supposed to be the, uh, bot. I mean, I did get the YouTube bot working, but it, uh... I don't know if it's working right now. Also, please excuse my handwriting. Is it okay, save it. I am so sorry. I should have known we were going to get into this rant. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Say that they're dragonflies from Drake Interplanetary. I wouldn't know what those look like. You know what? You got me curious, though. Got to look better than, uh... Than whatever the heck they're using in Destiny 2. <laughs> okay, I looked up, uh... The Dragonfly, and it gave me stuff from Star Citizen. Oh, no. Gonna also stream on Twitch. I think the horse was, uh... Still gonna stick it out there for Mystery V2 Theater. Anyway, we need to move on because we've been on scooters way too long. Okay, so, ice planets. Let's talk about ice planets. This is a nice coat. I like this coat. And I like this scarf. In case you haven't noticed, I'm a fan of the cold. 
I'm much, much better in the cold. I'm a lot nicer in the cold. I'm way less miserable in the cold. Exploring, because we travel all over the galaxy. Creating, I like to create things. Flying, flying is in my blood. Lego. Now, one of my goals is to do some uh, Lego building streams. At some point, I already got the first set picked out. Uh, it's the Lego Vespa. You probably figured that out already, given that long rant we had between scooters and motorcycles. <laughs> winter is so much better. Yes, winter is so much better. That's what they call it on Earth. I have been to Earth. I was on Earth for five years studying abroad. Winter was definitely better. Summer was still miserable, but I do believe by the time of this broadcast, 2023, you guys still haven't fixed global warming. You might want to get on that. This is me from 2677 telling you to get your shit together. <laughs> uh, but yeah, ice planets. Way better than the opposite. Desert planets, which is on the dislike. Okay, so, coffee. I am a coffee person. One of our emotes is literally a coffee mug. Actually, I don't know if you guys have unlocked the coffee mug. There's this whole thing we're doing, we have to do with channel members, where in order to unlock these first eight emotes, we need like 15 members, because it goes by the number of memberships we actually have. Uh... No, you got the coffee mug. The coffee mug is available now. So is the cheer, the angry, the laugh, and the woo. There's three more. We're still working on it. Yeah, there it is. Gavin's got it. <laughs> Gavin has it. I would, I, I, I would like to take a moment here to uh, give a big thanks to our uh, initial channel members. All four of you. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, enjoy that coffee <laughs> emote. <laughs> Please, please, use them and abuse them. I love it. I love it. Uh, those emotes, by the way, were done by the lovely and fantastic... Uh, hang on, I have it here. Here she is. Uh, Red Leaves Studio. They were fantastic to work with. I, I sent them a whole bunch of, like... Like, this is what I want, and I want this, and I want this, and she was like, okay, cool, let's do it. And then I was like, can we make the coffee emote look like a Hutton mug? And they were like, absolutely, yes. Absolutely delightful person to work with. Love them. <laughs> they were great. The credits are around here somewhere. I'll find it, don't worry. Anyway, uh... Let's keep moving, because uh, we actually, we're on a time limit here. There's another announcement, but it's set to go live on the channel at 7, so we need to get through this segment as quickly as we can. Uh, anyway, meatloaf. That's my favorite dish. Uh, meatloaf is my favorite dish, and... Uh, it's meatloaf and coffee. They don't go together. Meatloaf and coffee. But coffee, that's my go-to drink. I don't outright despise tea. But it is on the dislike side of this. Just so uh, people really know where I reside in the whole coffee versus tea debate. And anime. Now, I had to put a bit of a... Put a, bit, put, put a bit of a note here, because um, I can't just list all the anime. This isn't even all of them. Uh, some of my favorite animes. 
Space Battleship Yamato. The original was pretty derpy. The remake is fantastic. Both seasons. I haven't seen the third. Uh, Planetes. Fantastic anime, but it's hard. It's a bit harder to find. Uh, Lucky Star is like a classic. It's like the Seinfeld of anime. Laid Back Camp. When you need something that's just the maximum amount of cozy, Laid Back Camp is my go-to. That that's my go-to. That's my go-to feel-good anime. Nichi Jo. It's very it's very good. Star Racers. You mean Star Blazers? America calls it Star Blazers instead of Space Battleship Yamato. It goes by both names. Personally, I call it Yamato. Anyway, Made in Abyss. For when you need one of those sad animes with the deceptively happy art style. <laughs> no, Made in Abyss is fantastic. They've already announced a third season of that. But I think it's going to be a while because they've run out of manga. <laughs> uh, Spice and Wolf. Did you guys see that Spice and Wolf is getting a new um, movie? And you know Anime Night's gonna do that. You know Anime Night's gonna watch the Spice and Wolf movie. Uh, Vinland Saga. Actually, Anime Night just did Vinland Saga. Vinland Saga is very, very good. I haven't finished the second season. I hear it's very, very different from the first. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Super Cub is an anime about 50cc motorcycles. But the thing, but the Super Cub is basically a scooter anyway, so... It's just for me, that anime! It's just for me! Only I, only I... found everything in that anime appealing. <laughs> uh... Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash, that is the best isekai anime that has ever been made. Only got one season, but it is the best one. It's the best fucking one, I assure you. Bochi the Rock. Bochi the Rock is like k -On, but it's not k -On. And it's way less cringe than k -On, even though Bochi, the main character, is cringe. Bochi is cringe. <laughs> Just plain and simple. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, Toradora. That's my favorite romantic comedy of all time. Even though Toradora is very mainstream. Anyway, uh... We also mentioned gaming. Uh, Chanzi Slain, 300 Kuba. Okay, there are um, there are more anime. There are more animes that I like, but I could not fit them on that sticky note. And that's a really large sticky note. We have like these. They're these really nice, like. 8 inch by 8 inch sticky note pads for when we need to write something really really big and stick it on a console and that's what I'm using here <laughs> anyway games Lego Rock Raiders that's it that's the that's the favorite one Lego Rock Raiders from 1999 is the favorite video game. And then there's, um... Of course there's the remake, Manic Miners, but that's a given! It's a given that I would like, uh, the remake, Manic Miners. Because it's really good. <laughs> uh, Fallout 3, 4, and 76. Yes, 76 is on here, and New Vegas isn't, because people have ruined New Vegas for me. They have not shit up about New Vegas. There was a video 
I saw on another stream recently. This is a real thing, I swear to God. I swear to God and man and all that is right with the universe, this is a real thing. There is a video of a guy trying to explain how New Vegas is superior to every Bethesda Fallout game while he's riding a roller coaster. This is a real thing. He explains this while he's riding a friggin' roller coaster. Like, that's gonna help him get his point across. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway. Uh, Ratchet and Clank. All of them. All of the Ratchet and Clanks. Just every single one of them. Except for the obvious ones that you're supposed to hate. Size Matters and Secret Agent Clank are garbage. <laughs> uh, Red Faction Gorilla. Red Faction Gorilla is my go-to stress relief game. Also, it's on Mars. My, my homeland. Mars. I'm a junkie for anything involving Mars. Like, any games that take place on Mars. Why do you think a whole ton of the games we have lined up for uh, this month take place on Mars. Anyway, Spore. Spore is a great game. We're gonna have some fun with Spore. We're already gonna play Spore. Looked up Lego Rock Raiders and what caught my attention was the name of the developer. Oh yeah. If I recall, they have a very silly name. <laughs> I forgot their name, actually. Oh, they don't have a silly name. <laughs> anyway, um, real quick pro tip about LEGO Rock Raiders, don't play the PS1 version. Play the PC version. PS1 version is like a completely different game, and it's just way worse. <laughs> anyway, um, Dead Space. I love Dead Space. I love everything about Dead Space. When they announced that um, they were closing the studio for Dead Space, I cried! I cried when they closed the studio for Dead Space. But now they're back and uh, the new game is fantastic. Uh, Titanfall! You gotta say that really loud. Titanfall! That's why it's written in all capital letters. And I will say this, Apex Legends is the worst thing to ever happen to Titanfall! <laughs> uh. RuneScape. This is a big one. I have been playing RuneScape longer than this channel has been on the internet. Yes. My RuneScape account outdates this channel. <laughs> I did not choose the RuneScape life. The RuneScape life chose me. That's what I always say. Seriously, look through, uh, look through, look through, uh, the head of the production's Twitter. I have always said that. And it never really made sense until I explained it just now. <laughs> Game came out in, I think, 2006. Uh, no, RuneScape is way older than that. You're forgetting, uh, RuneScape Classic. I think, um, thinking about it, I do have the 15-year veteran cape in RuneScape, and I'm closing in on the 20-year cape. You can still play, yes, you can still play the original version of RuneScape. In fact, I recently found out the original version of RuneScape 
has been getting updates. And they have an entire continent that we don't have in RuneScape 3. They have a whole bunch of stuff that we don't have. <laughs> They're like two completely different games at this point, and it's ridiculous. Now let's talk about Mass Effect. Because I'm a sci-fi VTuber, and we're going to talk about Mass Effect. At some point, we're going to play Mass Effect. All of them. Every single Mass Effect game, including Andromeda. <laughs> yes, we're going to play Andromeda. It's not that bad. Imagine old school RuneScape having more content than the modern game. Okay, that was an island, right? They were teasing this island since like 2008, I think. Maybe even earlier than that. Uh, and it was this great big... It was, the, it was the Dinosaur Island. For those of you who are in the know. It was the Dinosaur Island. And they were, and they were building a boat to get to the Dinosaur Island. 2018 rolls around. Probably wasn't 2018. It might have been 2019 or maybe even 2020. Some god-awfully long amount of time rolls around. RuneScape 3 finally gets the island update. Old school RuneScape has had the island for eight years by this point. It wasn't eight years. It might have been more like five. Maybe four. They are getting stuff before we do. And there's this inequality going on, and we need to talk about Mass Effect. <laughs> we need to talk about Mass Effect because we're on that part of the list. Uh, okay, so Mass Effect. At some point, we are going to play through all three Mass Effects. And then Andromeda. Probably... This is probably going to happen after the gaming channel is done with it. Because the gaming channel is still playing through Mass Effect. Actually, the gaming channel just had a new Mass Effect video today. They just did the Jacob loyalty mission. Go check it out. I hate that mission. I hate that mission so much because I've done it like 15 times. I don't know. How, long, how many times have I played through Mass Effect 2? Like 12 Yeah, uh-huh. I have an annual playthrough for Mass Effect. And after playing that through all three of those games every year for 12 years, I can safely confirm they are pretty good. <laughs> uh, anyway. Genshin Impact is a game. I wasn't sure whether to put Genshin or Honkai Star Rail on here. Because on one hand, Genshin has a lot more going for it. And I like the combat in Genshin a lot more. And, uh, well, of course there's Klee. Uh, but on the other hand... I have only spent $20 in Honkai Star Rail. And I've got like six five-star characters. Like... This is fucking crazy with that game. Like, what is going on? What is my luck? This is insane! I go crazy! And then you go play Genshin Impact, I can't get a freaking four star. So what is my luck in that? It's like polar opposites. It's freaking crazy. <laughs> uh. The addiction is starting. Okay. 
In, in defense of Star Rail, I have only spent $20. Because uh, Head of the Productions put this uh, policy in place that if we're playing gotcha games, we can only spend $20. Unless it's really, really worth it. Or it's really, really fair. So, like, uh, recently on Twitch, we were playing the laid-back camp game. And I did the math on it. To get Rin's scooter in that game, you have to pull, you have to do gotcha pulls. You have to buy the currency. In order to get enough to actually earn Rin's scooter, you have to spend somewhere in the ballpark of... $400, I think it was? For $400, I could put an actual real down payment on an actual real scooter. I could put an actual real payment on an actual real, actual real Vino Classic. Which is what Rin drives in that anime, by the way. <sighs> And that's why the late back camp game is not on this list. Pikmin! Pikmin is on the list, though. We've been playing lots of Pikmin lately. Um, Pikmin 4. Pikmin 4 has been on the Twitch lately, and it's awesome. Yeah, God, I love it. Uh, but yeah, we're going to play some Pikmin games on this channel, on these streams. We, we might actually play some Pikmin games like this month. Eventually we'll play through all four of them. Uh, starting with Pikmin 1, obviously. Then Pikmin 2. Pikmin 2 is going to take a while because Pikmin 2 is way longer. Pikmin 3 probably won't take long. We could probably knock that out in two or three streams. Pikmin 4, on the other hand, that game is long as hell. It's not as long as Kerbal Space Program, though, which is also on this list. Yeah, we play Kerbal Space Program. We do a bit of Kerbling. You should see what the gaming channel was able to accomplish. That We landed on every planet and every moon over there. It took forever. Not as bad as Kerbal Space Program 2, though. God, I hate Kerbal Space Program 2. I can't believe what they did to that. Ugh. 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 <laughs> Nintendo Land was weird, though. Oh, Nintendo makes weird games. I mean... Metopia was weird. Mario inherently is pretty weird. You know what was going to be on this sticky note, though? Wind Waker. I really, really, really like Wind Waker. That's my favorite Zelda game. I, 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 I was type. I was writing this out last night, and I was like, I should put my favorite Zelda game on there. And then I ran out of room. So now there's just Medal of Honor and etc. <laughs> uh, very specific Medal of Honors, by the way. The first one, the classic Medal of Honor, is pretty good. Frontline is the best one. Allied Assault is great. The VR one, Above and Beyond, damn good game. Love that game. That's made by the same guys that made Titanfall, you know. Yeah. Those guys that made Titanfall, they made a VR World War II game. And it was really kick-ass. Gaming Channel played it. <laughs> because you know, the Gaming Channel at some point played all of these games. The Gaming Channel had a playthrough of LEGO Rock Raiders, three of the Ratchet and Clanks, Red Faction Guerrilla. They had a Spore playthrough but gave up on it. They played Titanfall on day one. They didn't play RuneScape. That's one thing that they didn't play. 
Mass Effect, they're still playing Mass Effect. Genshin Impact, they got a playthrough for the summer event going right now. Pikmin, they have a literally have a playthrough going for Pikmin. They did everything in Kerbal Space Program, and we played through the VR Medal of Honor game. So pretty much anything that's on the gaming channel, basically, basically, those are probably my favorite games. And the little etc. is on there because I ran out of room. But anyway, finally, now that we're through the like section, yes, we're still on this, now I can tell you my dislikes. I really, really, really hate drama. I don't like drama. I also hate broccoli. It's the one food. That is my one food I cannot stand. I don't know why. I just can't stand it. It's horrible. That is the one food I can't stand. You know what else I can't stand? Loud cars. I hate loud cars so much. Specifically, the people who modify their cars to be as ungodly loud as humanly possible. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. I want to become president of Earth and outlaw all of them. I also really, really, really hate bugs. And Battle Royale games. By extension of uh, Battle Royale games, I also hate losing. You'll notice that, uh, like, over these next several streams, you'll notice that I really, really, really hate losing. Because I will scream and shout and I will stamp my boots on the floor. These are really nice boots. <laughs> you saw them in the model showcase. Like, yes, stop with the mufflers. Stop all the mufflers! I really, really, really hate them. Hate mufflers. This is one of the reasons I drive scooters. You know why I like scooters? Because they're quiet. They're like the civilized version of a motorcycle. Now, in contrast to ice planets on the like list, I really, really, really hate desert planets. I hate desert planets. They're too hot. There's nothing there. There's no reason to go there. They're made of sand. And if I ever see Tatooine in Star Wars one more time, if we go to Tatooine one more time, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something so bad I don't even know what it is yet. No one is going to die. No one is going to get hurt. But I'm going to say some really mean things online about it. Or maybe not me. That's really more of the horse's job. What about cold desert planets? Well, I mean. You know, Mars used to be a desert. It's not anymore. After the terraforming came in, yeah, we have trees now. We have uh, plants, oceans. We have very nice oceans on Mars. They uh, brought a lot of uh, animals over from Earth introduce them into the Martian ecosystem. Pretty cool. Until they brought over too many bears. Yeah, th yeah, this happened when I was 15. Uh, I shot a lot of bears. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's where the gun came from. How much of it is still rust deserts? Oh, we have those. The red sands of Mars. They're, they're, they're a staple of Mars. I love my planet. I love my planet. Uh, the, like, have you ever seen the documentary The Martian? <laughs> I 
Anyway, authority. I hate authority. I mean, I, I'm captain of this ship. I am the authority on this ship, but I hate authority. Why do you think we started the rebellion in the first place? T. I don't outright despise T. It's just on here uh, to show where I belong in the whole coffee versus tea debate. It's not a heated debate. I just want coffee. Thieves! I really, really, really hate thieves. Why do you think my scooter has like five locks on it? Before I became a space captain, I worked at a grocery store. Yes, we have those on Mars, because contrary to what you may think, we do have infrastructure now. And I kept a list of all of the things they took from me. I lost five drinks, a recycling bin lid. Yes, they took the lid, a coat, one glove, just one. The cart robot. Tried to take the cooler one time. I'm tired of people stealing my stuff. Oh, my sunglasses. They took those too. Yeah. The model was going to have sunglasses, guys. But uh, someone stole those from me ten years ago. <laughs> Why did they take a single glove on the cart robot? Well, they took the single glove for God knows what what reasons. The cart robot, I also don't know. Solar General. <laughs> uh, being bored, but that's a given. That's just on here to fill space. Traffic. I really, really, really hate traffic. And motorcycles. But you already know why I hate motorcycles. <laughs> why not get new sunglasses? You try it affording new sunglasses on uh, the budget that they gave us to fight the USCM. It's hard. <laughs> anyway, uh, try to hit the volume there. We need to move on. Uh, there's a bit of, there's a bit more lore that, um, I'd like to go over. Traffic could get a little cluttered sometimes. Oh, the, the traffic on Earth is way worse than the traffic we have on Mars. Like, you guys, you Earthicans, are crazy. That's just fucking nuts. Have you seen New York City? I don't think I don't think Mars could get that bad even if we tried. <laughs> but anyway, enough about the likes and dislikes. We've been on this for like 40 minutes. We've been talking about these likes and dislikes. Uh we need to move on cuz uh I wanted to talk about, I'd prefer to call myself Earthborn. Yeah, that's fine. Earthican, Earthborn. It's all the same. Anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, some of the stuff we're actually going to be playing. Uh, so, just, I'm leading into something with this, by the way. So just roll with me on it. Because um, we're going to be playing Prey. That's tomorrow, actually, is we're going to be playing Prey. And we're, and we're actually going to be able to go kind of late with that. Because D&D &D is on hold to make room for, well, me. Uh, Head of the Productions put a lot of their other stuff on hold so that we could uh, actually do this. Uh, but aside from Prey, we also have Doom. We're going to be playing Doom because it's on Mars. 
I told you, I'm a junkie for anything on my home planet. That's why uh, we're also playing, uh, where is it? Here it is, Surviving Mars. <laughs> Who's the predator? Uh, me. Have you played that game? It's crazy. I love that game. Like, hang on. Go back to Prey. Go back to Prey. That's the wrong Prey, but that'll do. Prey is a game filled with great ideas. And I thought it would be a really good game to kick things off with for our first game stream. Are you ever going to play Doom Eternal? Yes, after we finish Doom. And we will finish Doom. Probably. We're probably going to finish Doom. Uh, I want to play Halo Wars, too. Uh, okay, I, I, I said uh, I want to play Halo Wars 2, and uh, what I meant to say was Halo Wars 1. I also want to play Halo Wars 2, but Halo Wars is like the best Halo has to offer, in my professional opinion. Or at least right now it is. I mean, come on. Halo Wars 2 was definitely the best thing 343 has put out. Prove me wrong. I don't consider myself a Halo fan, but prove me wrong. <laughs> uh, we have more thumbnails. Oh, this one I'm particularly proud of. We're playing Hard Space Shipbreaker. Hard Space Shipbreaker is a game about taking spaceships apart. It's going to be a really chill game, and I, and, and I hope you guys show up for that stream. It's a little more on the slow side compared to what we're streaming this month, but we are doing it this month. Also, just look at that thumbnail. That's some of, that's some of our best work right there. That is really good. That's better than the Doom one. <laughs> Let's see, what else do we have? Uh, well, obviously we're playing Outer Wilds. <laughs> Halo Wars are better than the main Halo games. Okay, Halo 3 was great. I have to get props where props are due. That game made more money than a small country makes in a year. Come on, man. What else are we playing? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, I guess we're playing that. That game that uh, people play just to spite Bethesda. Yeah, that's my opinion on that. <laughs> you know, I would say no to Outer Worlds. If it didn't fit my persona so dang well. Now, moving on here. I know I know what you're probably wondering, but Hunter. Where is Hunter? So let's address that elephant in the room right now. Hunter Reviews is not getting canceled, but it is going on the back burner. And now, to, and now to answer the other inevitable question, but Nate! What if we get stranded on a planet? Well, then we're going to have to fight the giant fish because we're also playing Subnautica. And I really like this thumbnail. <laughs> uh. Now I know what else you're thinking. But Nate! What about the big one? The biggest one of them all. The one that we're all excited for, inevitably. What about the most inevitable game of all time? Well, worry not. Because we're playing Starfield all September long. I have... An entire month of Starfield lined up for you guys. It's the only game we're going to be playing in September. And yes, 
I got the premium version, which will allow us to start on September 1st. Also, for those of you who won it on the, uh, there are two people who won Starfield on the, uh, Oktoberfest giveaway. You are still getting those. I did not forget. I have your names written down. But yeah, uh, you would expect us to play Starfield. But there is one thing uh, that you probably didn't expect. And that is this. I've kept this hidden from everybody. It suddenly struck me that that tiny pea, pretty and blue, was the earth. I put up my thumb and shut one eye, and my thumb blotted out the planet Earth. I didn't feel like a giant. I felt very, very small. Neil Armstrong. It's a very sobering feeling to be up in space and realize that one's safety factor was determined by the lowest bidder on a government contract. Alan Shepard. One in 200 stars has habitable Earth-like planets surrounding it. In the galaxy, half a billion stars have Earth-like planets going around them. That's huge. Half a billion. So when we look at the night sky, it makes sense that someone is looking back at us. Michio Kaku. Sometimes I think we're alone in the universe, and sometimes I think we're not. In either case, the idea is quite staggering. Arthur C. Clarke. Space is big. You won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. I mean, you may think it's a long way down the road to the drugstore, but that's just peanuts compared to space. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Maybe not that last one. Oh, and you can come up with something better? I've been online for 200 years. I'm bound to have a few more bits of wisdom. You lived in a box for most of that 200 years. You having more wisdom? That doesn't make any sense. The universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Damn it! Oh, I am muted. Yes. Anyway, it's not a mind series. Even if it looks and feels like a mind series. But, uh... I'm getting a show. Hunter had a show. The other guy in Fallout had a show. The other other guy in Fallout had a show. Head Enter Gaming has Fallout 76. I am getting a show. 
It's not a mind series, even if it looks like one and feels like one and flows the same as one. But a lot of work has already gone into into it. This is that project oddity that we were kind of uh, teasing at uh, way, way back in May, I think it was. It might have even been April. We started uh, teasing um, Starfield oddity. Sat around the idea table for a really long time with that name, by the way. <laughs> Love the use with the L. You know that's just the regular Starfield logo, right? We stole that. And just put the word oddity on there. <laughs> so it's a mind series, but it's not. Yes, and we're still waiting on uh, our game key for Starfield from Key Mailer. Because Bethesda was doing, um, they were offering keys for Starfield uh, to uh, content creators. And hey, I, I thought to myself, hey, we're content creators. Come to think of it, we've made a lot of content. A lot of Bethesda content. In fact, we've made so much... we made the longest-running Fallout YouTube series on the planet. We've actually convinced a ton of people to buy Fallout 3. Maybe even 4. Definitely 3, but maybe even 4. Maybe even New Vegas. Just think of all the money that we've made Bethesda. <gasps> Bethesda, you owe us at this point. You owe us at this point. So, uh, free game key. Gimme, gimme. <laughs> and that's me being an entitled bastard. All right, so what's next? We have a million and ten things to go through. You guys want to talk about the ship? Because, uh... Is it, are they ready? Yeah, okay. Wes says that uh, the ship slides are ready. We can talk about the ship. <laughs> when will the first episode drop? Uh, we don't know yet. Uh, sometime in 2024. Like, the game has to come out first. I have to play it first. <laughs> anyway, uh, the ship. You guys were very curious at the beginning of this. Uh, as to uh, the ship. So, let's talk about the ship. Wes, cue the ship blueprints. So, this, to the untrained eye, this is a Condor-class star freighter. Yes, it is a freighter, but it is not within the set parameters for a civilian transport ship. It has been questionably modified with four X-36 laser turrets. Those are double barrel, by the way. Two Dynamo G-22 double barrel siege cannons. Those are wing mounted, by the way. Eight Halcyon D-6 escape pods. A completely new sublight engine. Several communications jamming additions. A fleet grade combat information center. An overhauled interior, ablative armor, and an extremely power-hungry shield generator. It's not the prettiest ship, but it's home. Favorite part of the ship? Uh, 
Where to start? Where to start? Well, we've made several modifications to it. Uh, most notably is the addition of an absolutely enormous, like, three-floor combat information center right in the middle of the ship. Also, the armored glass we had to put over the bridge. And the aftermarket guns we had to put on this thing. Originally, most of the ship was actually cargo. Then we had to put in a lab, a med bay. Then we, uh... Th What's the ramming capabilities? Oh, you would be surprised. They are actually quite good. Because this is a ship that's actually meant to bounce off asteroids. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> She's sturdy. We picked a very sturdy ship and then bolted more armor to it. And a shield generator that makes the lights flicker because we don't have enough power. We have to shunt everything around. And yes, we have artificial gravity. You believe it? If we ha didn't have artificial gravity, all the drinks in the cantina would float away. That's the bar I mentioned, by the way. We have a cantina on board. The workshop, the armory, the lounge. We have aftermarket showers on this thing. There's a shower room. How powerful are, are the guns? Well... The X-36 laser turrets are... They're about what you would expect from... What's a good analog from your guys' time? They're not that powerful. They're not very powerful. Does it have mining capabilities? Do you seriously think we're a mining ship? No! It's not a single mining thing on this ship. But, uh, no, they're not that powerful, and we mostly use them for point defense, actually. Because they're actually really, really accurate. What the laser turrets make up for in strength, they make up for in extremely good accuracy. We've been known to down fighters with those things. Regularly. However, the G-22 double-barrel siege guns mounted on the- mounted on the wings, on the other hand. <laughs> can we, uh, can we get an image of that, please? Okay, so... We have these absolutely gigantic double barrel siege cannons mounted on the wings and that is the word i would use for them gigantic because at this point they are larger than some of the rooms on this ship they are very illegal this this thing is definitely not within the set parameters for a civilian transport ship we mainly use these guns for strafing uh, ground targets. They are siege cannons. They are meant for demolishing things. But we have been known to use them for uh, shooting other spaceships. Because space battles happen all the time out here. But yeah, the ship itself went through three different artists uh, to finally get the ship art sorted out. Actually, hang on. Let me pull that up again real quick. Sorry. I'm just super proud of this ship design. It's a fine ship. And it's home. I'm one of those people that's 
very at home on their ship. <laughs> How many space battles have happened so far? That is a difficult question. The war went on for nine years, you know. It was not a short war. It takes a long time for a rebellion to actually get anywhere. <laughs> Things didn't really start going our way hugely until the Battle of Arcadia. But yeah, uh, anyway, anyway, pulling up uh, the info on this. Uh, we went through f three artists to until uh, we uh, finally got the design finished for this. Three artists, because uh, the well, the first artist wasn't very good. We we didn't get along with the first artist. We didn't really see eye to eye, and uh, he. Long story short, he wasn't really able to finish the ship design, and we ended up with this. To protect the innocent, I will not say who, who uh, gave up and decided to draw my scooter. <laughs> but when we went to the second artist, oh boy. We had a bit of a problem, <laughs> because, uh, I don't think they understood the assignment. Let me see here. Where was the first thing they sent me? I can't find the first thing that they submitted to me but I don't think they understood the assignment that or I'm I'm 86 percent sure 86 percent that's high 86 percent sure the second artist was using AI art and tracing over it because that's what it looked like because they sent the first one that they, they had uh Basically, the initial design, the pixel design that I sent in, but they filled it in with what looked like AI art. The second one wasn't much better, and the second one I do have, and I I got real specific with the second one. I was like, no, 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 no. It's got to be like this. It's got to be this shape, kind of like the Hammerhead Corvette from Star Wars or something, you know. Or um, Colonial One from Battlestar Galactica, which is a show I've never watched, but uh, the ship shapes aligned very nicely. And let's put these bugger off massive cannons on the wings, because I wanted to have cannons and all that. And I went very, very specifically into detail about what I needed. And they sent me this. What the fuck is that? Like, what? How did you get it this wrong? Okay, first of all, I'm pretty sure you're still using AI art, but second, you literally built the chassis of the ship out of the gun. This doesn't look like what I wanted at all. And that's when I cut ties with that artist and we got refunded. Yes, we got refunded for that. The third artist, who I will say was the most expensive of the three, but they actually knew what they were doing, uh, was a guy by the name of Greg. Uh, that is uh, Raxus, two X's on Fiverr. And for $156, <laughs> we got this. 
We finally got a design I was happy with. Because we, we basically had to uh, design the whole thing from the ground up because it's based on a ship from Starbound, but uh, I wanted a more original design. Something that looks more ready for combat. Something that we, looks like we've modified very heavily from a freighter. And this is what we ended up with. And this, I like this. This is cool. <laughs> uh. Anyway, going back to the slides here. The original design was um, the pixelated version you see here with the interior room shots. Are those things that look like intakes retro engines? Uh, the engines are in the back. We don't have an afterburner engine on this thing. You go over to uh, the Starhammer, they have a really big afterburner engine. That, that ship is insane. The Starhammer is insane. They don't need an engine that big, and they're a missile cruiser. Why do you need to go, like... It's nuts. That thing clocks in at about... I think they said it was somewhere around, uh... 8,000 KMH? Talking about retro engines is in a way to decorate. How does this thing slow down? Oh, we have, um... Well, I mean, you can flip and burn. Like, say, so you got the edges in the back here, and you're, bur and, 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 and you're burning. Uh, what, what you could do is, uh, you just turn the ship around and, uh, fire the engine the, the other way. We have thrusters that slow us down. Relax. <laughs> Can you imagine if the ship did have an afterburner? Caridian is not fast. She's just very durable. What she makes up for in speed, she makes up for in durability. Looks inspired from a Star Wars Hammerhead class. I get that from everybody. Everybody tells me, oh, it looks like a hammerhead. Everybody tells me it looks like a hammerhead. Well, did you ever stop to consider that maybe the hammerhead is just a really nice design? Do you ever stop to consider that? That is a nice ship. Are the siege cannons rail guns, coil guns, or chemical based? They are good old fashioned slug throwing cannons. They're just cannons. <laughs> they fire solid ordnance. <laughs> what did you think? Uh, did you think that we uh, still weren't using guns? Did you think we were done with bullets? No, we still use bullets. Wrong button. I'm still getting used to these buttons. Uh, yeah. Rifle. I think I need to explain this rifle a little bit for you guys. Just a bit. Uh, where are the notes? Here are the notes. The M276 Argus Long Rifle. It's chambered in 30 out 6. Yes, it's the same bullet that, uh... What's an analog from your type? It's the same bullet that the M1 Garand fires. 10 round magazine capacity. 
Good for soft targets in the 1 to 800 meter range. It's a nice design. This rifle was designed by... <laughs> There's a lot of credits uh, going out today. This was designed by Afandi from... Uh... It's faster if I link you the Fiverr page for this one. So if you guys need uh, a cheap but also really good weapon design... <laughs> I believe we got the $20 uh, package. Wow, that chat is very delayed. I just noticed. <laughs> that is bad. Wow. Uh, this thing has an integrated Gauss accelerator. Gives it a little bit more power. It has a modified polished bolt action. This is a bolt action rifle. I wasn't comfortable with a carbine. The bolt is a little bit more accurate. Has a little bit of a better range. Plus, come on. They're just cooler. They're just cooler. <laughs> I like the cross of uh, Leanfield and Mose and the Gaunt. I don't see it. I meant to ask. I don't know what they modeled this after. I believe my exact words. Were, well, actually, I could get you my exact words. I have our chat logs. Uh, rough sketch from the image above. Wait, what? Okay, I told him I'm designing a new VTuber model and I'm looking for a sci-fi bolt action rifle, kind of like Blair, which I'm not going to share because uh, the because the reference image is... Uh, well, that particular artist didn't want their art being like replicated, so I said I want an original design, kind of like this, but not like this, because they don't want uh, their stuff being used. But it was the best example I could find. And I will not link it here to protect the innocent. Also because I'm not entirely sure they're around anymore. Is there a dog in here? There is a dog on this ship, by the way. <laughs> Hang on, someone open the door. Okay. Anyway, just to uh, finish everything off, uh, I, get, I had it modified with a laminated wood finish. It was all metal with a... Um, it had a wire stock you know those kind of stocks that had a hole in it i didn't like that so i got so i got that so i got uh, the wood finish it's nice you don't really you don't really get that wood finish on mars because uh trees are more valuable here on mars <laughs> trees are way more valuable here we don't have as many as earth we got to be more careful with them Yeah, gun lore! Gun lore! <laughs> we have gun lore. The wood finish makes it look more pretty. Yes, yes it does. That's exactly why I wanted that wood finish. <laughs> exactly why I wanted that wood finish. I put the rifle on uh, the ref sheet, actually. Yes, the ref sheet. This is not the original ref sheet, by the way. The, the original ref sheet was a lot messier. In fact, 
I think I can find the original ref sheet. It's here somewhere. Where is it? I saw it earlier. Wes, where is it? No, no, they have to see it. Come on. <laughs> Where we put it? Earth still has trees. Yes. Uh, but by by twenty by my year twenty six seventy seven, you guys did fix Earth. Right, you did fix that. That was good. That, that's good job, Earth. For once, you guys tend to screw everything up and you know start wars. <laughs> Found it. All right, this was the original ref image. <laughs> It's like, these boots, but brown. This belt, but without the yellow and all that. These pants, space pants, but black. Because black is better, I wear black because everything matches. Except the coat. This is a very nice coat. I like this coat. <laughs> yeah, I told you. All they had to go off of, uh, the, the original artist, all they had to go off of was pixel art and those images on the side are what they came up with that's incredible that is a fantastic artist in fact we're bringing them on to do some more character design work in the future <laughs> that's so messy i know i know it's very messy it's awful it was so awful I went to Rio with that Rio Uku, our D and D artist, and she was like, "I don't think I could do this one." <laughs> uh, the logo is good too. The logo, well, the logo was designed by. That's on Twitter. I have to pull up Twitter, and yes, I will call it Twitter. Uh, Mizurena, uh, at my name is Rena underscore. They did the logo design. How are the guns on the ship controlled? CIC. We have, uh, gun control consoles on in the uh, combat information center which is good because the combat information center is like right smack dab in the center of the ship it's labeled right there cic it's right there in front of the uh central bulkhead and the workshop i forgot who is the guy who successfully made art of the ship greg you know what? I'm going to link that guy because he did such a good job. <laughs> he did such a great job that we're going to link that. The logo really fits. I'm going to be honest. I don't like it. Okay, first of all, it's 4,000 by 4,000 pixels, so stand by. There we go. I'm going to be honest, I don't like it. I don't like the pink. Like, what? I mean, we're going to keep it, obviously. They worked very hard on it. But I feel like we could have uh, could have done something better. And no, there have been no AI rebellions unless you count the. Um, there is an entire race of robots. Wow, all of you guys are uh, asking about AI, huh? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Since everybody's asking questions, let's a let's let's answer questions. Where's that slide? I had a slide for uh, the Q&A. But uh, the thing is, uh, there's going to be a lot of questions that I'm not going to answer. Like, if you ask me to review Blue Brouhaha and the blah, 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 
that that's going in the spam folder and the horse does not read the spam folder so uh there's going to be a lot of questions but not as many answers so really it's this is not a q and a this is a q and q and a because there's going to be a lot of questions but not a lot of answers <laughs> So anyway, uh, let's start with the AI question. There have been no AI rebellions, but there is an AI race of robots. They're pretty cool. We have one on board. His name is... Let's get the crew manifest here. It was Silverheart. <laughs> we we have a robot on board named Silverheart. And uh yeah, there have been no AI uprisings, which is good because we're never going to play the System Shock remake. Had some bad experiences with the System Shock remake. Notable movie theater experiences. That's going in the spam folder. <laughs> What's the top speed of the ship? Well, that depends on... Uh... Well, in space, speed is relative because everything is in motion, but that's not the answer that you're looking for, is it? So... Instead, I will tell you that our in-atmospheric speed is about 800 meters a second. We're not that fast. But we do have, a f but we do have the FTL drive on board, which, uh, <laughs> you know, tiny bit faster. An FTL drive. That caps out at about... Uh, I don't actually know. If we go from Sol to Alpha Centauri, we're there in like... Mm, 30 seconds? Something like that? <laughs> What's the closest moment the Calridian came to being destroyed? Definitely, um towards the end of the Battle of Aegis where we crashed it into the capital of the planet. Context. <laughs> uh, Arcadia is the largest colonized world outside of the core systems. And during the Battle of Arcadia, we took it and that became our home base for a really long time. In fact, it kind of still is. Or at least it was until uh, the Battle of Luna, which wasn't really a battle. They didn't have a lot left at that point, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> how long are you going to burn the engines? It depends on how much fuel we have left. Ludicrous speed? Uh, no, we don't do that. We don't talk about ludicrous speed. Said you had a horrible experience working in a grocery store. Can you tell us some bad experiences you had during that job? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, let me think, let me think, let me think. Um, how to word this? By the way, out of character, all of these grocery store experiences are real. Out of character, I have actually had all that stuff stolen from me. And this thing I'm about to explain to you also happened recently, as a matter of fact. Here we go. All right, back in character. Uh, okay, so there was this one lady. Uh, and she came out and she's like, don't you have a manager on duty? And I'm like, I don't really know, ma'am. And she's like, well, well, you tell them the next time I come around the corner and there's a puddle of water and 
the wet floor sign is all crumpled and bent and you can't even see it and 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 the manager isn't there to fix it and you and you're out here doing your job or whatever and and I slip and fall and break my spine you're going to be hearing from my attorney and what I did to resolve this situation because she was on her way out she was already walking away what I did to resolve this situation was I stared at her. And this is what I said. I said. Yeah, okay, ma'am. You're going to have to write all that down, though, because I'm not going to remember. She went on for like half a minute with this. <laughs> yeah, you know. Karen! 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 Uh, I did call her a Karen, but she was out of earshot at that point. <laughs> What's my kill count? I have no idea. All I can tell you is that I have killed and I will kill again. Yeah, Karens don't know what it's like to work at a retail job. Yeah, see, this is the thing. I'm going to become president of Earth, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm going to implement my forced retail amendment. Everyone is going to have to work 1 year of retail. You could do it part-time. You could do it after school. You could do it with an with an entirely other job. But everyone has to do one year of mandatory retail service or food service, one or the other. Everybody needs to work at least one year of retail or food service because you get this newfound appreciation for the people who actually work retail. Also, some crazy stuff happens when you work retail, guys. I mean, it is nuts. Have you ever seen a Karen try to run over another Karen with one of those uh, rascals? Those ride-around rascals? The, the Mart cart? We threw her out, and then the Karen that she was trying to run over came out to yell at the Karen that was trying to run her over, and then... Get this. You're not going to believe this. It was crazy. There was a third Karen. There was a third freaking Karen. It was some Karen versus Karen and Karen action going on. And the one Karen who was getting yelled at was like, Somebody needs to call the police because my phone is being jammed. True fucking story. This happened. There's some crazy stuff that happens when you work retail. Karen! <laughs> and they were all arguing. They were all arguing. It was amazing. And all I could do was just sit there and watch. All I could do was sit there and watch the Karens! Uh... <laughs> Had a guy yell at me, but he was upset about the flashing lights at our security vehicle outside. Don't you guys have um, a social media platform that's doing that right now? Elon Musk tried to rename Twitter to X, but everyone still calls it Twitter. But he still put this giant X on top of the office anyway. But it wasn't enough for him to just put a X on top of the Twitter office building, was it? No, 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 that wasn't grand enough for that guy. Because it's a fucking strobe light! And there's apartment buildings on the other side of the street that are getting strobe lit! <laughs> it's like witnessing a WWE fight IRL. Okay, it would be a WWE fight if WWE was just... Karen's yelling at each other. War crimes? Yeah, we did war crimes. A 
and got away with them like a fucking champion. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, when you're in the rebellion, the Geneva Convention is more like the Geneva Suggestion. You do what you gotta do. Uh, I probably shouldn't be talking about this in case this whole mercenary thing doesn't work out and the new Terran military needs, and I need a new job. <laughs> Uh, any clues you could give us on the unannounced stuff? I think we've announced everything. Those, like, the lore video and Starfield Oddity, those were the two really big ones. And also the fact that I'm never going to fight Thargoids again. Yeah, we're going to play Elite Dangerous, but uh, we're not going to fight Thargoids. Laser weapons are actual lasers, not particle beams or bolts, right? Uh, try to imagine one of those laser cutters that could cut through metal, but cranked up to 11. And it's an actual weapon. <laughs> the, like It is meant to be shot at people. We have handheld ones. We have laser rifles. It's just some of us use bullets. <laughs> but yes, the laser weapons are... So, I thought you said there was more stuff later on. Uh, there is. There's a bunch of stuff happening with uh, the D&D show, but we're not ready to announce that yet. Not ready to announce that yet. There's been a bit of an upheaval at Headhunter Productions. So, yeah. Um, Hunter Reviews the Martian. That's happening. Any mechs? Yes! We have mechs. We actually have a specified mech operator but the mech always breaks so uh more often than not the uh, mech operator has to jump out of the mech and that's why we gave her a light machine gun <laughs> we have all kinds of guns on this ship that's uh, that you know what you know what I'm going to answer this question for you guys. What guns have I fired? What haven't I fired? There's like a billion guns out there, and I've used all of them. <laughs> How is Starfield Oddity different from the Mind series? Well, first of all, it's not called Nate's Mind. Second, we have a new AI for that. I said, you know, why don't we, uh, introduce that guy, actually? Why don't we, uh, introduce good old Sail? The shipboard artificial intelligence liaison. Although in that show, it's going to be called the standard artificial intelligence liaison. Hello. That's the wrong voice. That's Rachel. <laughs> We were supposed to use this one. Hello. <laughs> this is Sale. Uh, but we... Uh... Okay. I'm going to let you guys in on uh, some behind-the-scenes stuff here. This is an AI-generated voice. Sale is an AI-generated voice. I can even make him admit it. Hang on. I am AI-generated. <laughs> Ever befriend any sentient robots? I mean... 
sale is sentient. Totally sentient. I am sentient. See? Totally sentient. He even admits it. He admits he's sentient. <laughs> it's like, oh, good. Head Hunter Productions found the AI voice generator. What website is the voice on? This is on uh, Eleven Labs. We made this. Yes. Head Hunter Productions has an AI generated voice. Now, the big question now is gonna be Nate, whose voice did you steal? to uh make this uh to make this ai voice thing possible you must have stolen somebody's voice in order to who uh in in order to uh in, in order to uh make this work whose voice did you steal mine it's mike's voice sale is basically mike 2.0 You can't really get in trouble when you're using a text-to-speech as your uh, reference files. And you just have him read off some Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia that anyone can edit. <laughs> he used Speakonia's mic? Yes. Sale is basically mic 2.0. And Sale is going to be in the Starfield series. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Do the siege cannons use chemical propellant or something else? Well, it's not like a standard bullet, if that's what you're wondering. It is a Gauss cannon, because we fire the whole projectile. That's 65% more bullet per bullet. <laughs> yes, it is a railgun accelerator. That's why whenever we use them, the power flickers. We have to turn the lights off in order to use those things. And the stove. And the microwave. And a bunch of other appliances. <laughs> What are the names of the crew members on the ship? All right. Let's meet the crew. So, first there's Donna. She's probably been with us the longest. Natsuki, we picked her up on a desert planet. Natsuki is, uh... Well, she's an alien, and, uh, she, she, um... Mm, mm. Yeah. You know. Uh there's Hexan. Uh he's the he's the bar bar bartender. Uh Silverheart, our robot. Demi, our field medic. Sandani, uh he works over in uh, communications. Lumen, he's part of the away team. Wes, uh, she, Wes is, uh, well, actually, he's over there. He's, he does the more technical stuff on the ship. Uh, Wallace, uh, Wallace, uh, works down in cargo, actually. He's the heavy lifter. Bloggy is a fucking penguin. It's a penguin with a gun. It's a penguin with a gun. Penguin with a gun. Uh, uh, Vincent is our uh, scientist. Uh, Danny is the assistant scientist. Yes, we have a science team. Because you have no idea what you're going to find out there. Oren, second in command, also part of the away team. Uh... Huetan, 
That's our engineer. There's Sarah. Keen, our aforementioned quartermaster. You're describing Nerve from Evangelion? What? Okay, first of all, Nerve is incompetent, and second, I f hate that anime. <laughs> uh, there's Silver, Misty, and Gogo. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's everybody. There's 23 souls on this ship, including myself. 24 if you include the dog. Please, I hope you include the dog. The dog did nothing wrong. The dog is the bravest soul on this ship. <laughs> there are many times we've nearly been blown up, and that dog is still with us. Like a f absolute champion. <laughs> uh, it's great. She looks good. It Wait, are we still talking about Natsuki? Anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's everybody. Um, we don't have pictures of everybody yet. A lot of art went into this as it is, so, uh, we'll meet them. There's gonna be more lore stuff down the line. Don't worry. What do you have planned for the first episode of Starfield Oddity after the month-long streams? Probably the beginning of the game. I figure the show should start at the beginning. There's going to be a lot of, uh, we're going to be doing a lot with Starfield. I'm going to have like four playthroughs going. One for the streams here. One probably for the gaming channel. One for myself. And then the fourth one for the show. What kind of alien species is your crush? Uh, you know, just, uh fish person out of character what is wrong with me what is wrong with me why do I always fall for the fish people <laughs> can you answer my question about the shipyard I don't think I saw your question about the shipyard give me one second to scroll back up to that Where the heck is it? Where's your question about the shipyard? Okay, you're gonna have to ask your question again about the shipyard. You have feelings for her? Um... Is she downstairs? Did you see her go downstairs? Did she leave? Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Jackson, you're gonna have to retype your question about the shipyard. I, 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 I think I know what the question is about, but uh, just to just, just, uh, be sure. In the meantime, let's see here. Other questions. Keep them coming. This is fun. <laughs> this is fun. Waiting for the inevitable question of... Uh, Waiting for the inevitable Thargoid question, because Elite Dangerous is going to be kind of big with these streams. So yeah, just waiting for the inevitable Thargoid question. Also, the Shipyard question. With, like, 
I'm interested. What planet did you first go to besides Mars? That would be Plukesia in the Alpha Centauri system. We stopped there, a uh, bit of a pit stop just to actually fuel the ship. Or did you mean like, um, or did you mean like, 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 like the first planet I went to besides Mars? Cause that would have been earth. Because when I was younger, I studied abroad on Earth. I was going to be an astrophysicist. Then the war happened. <laughs> Any important shipyards that supplied the rebellion with warships? As a matter of fact, yes. There was a very generous group called the Frontier Foundation, which kind of became our biggest donor of ships, supplies, and materials. Uh, that was uh, somewhere in the middle of the Battle of... Uh, well, it was after the First Battle of Aegis, I can tell you that. The First Battle of Aegis ended in disaster. The second one went better, though. Uh, yeah, that would have had to have been right after the Battle of Parliament Station. You can read all about it on Spacepedia, the free online encyclopedia that anyone from space can edit. <laughs> What's up with the Thargoids and the new update of Elite Dangerous? I wouldn't know. People have asked me uh, if I can fight Thargoids. A lot of people have asked me if I can fight Thargoids, and recently... We've had a bit of a falling out with the Thargoids. This is elite dangerous talking, by the way. Uh, but uh, I did, however, put together a little uh, video presentation for you, guy, for you guys. Um, yes, I brought some visual aids for this question of uh, if I will fight Thargoids. So... Can Nate Cooper fight Thargoids? Actually, I'm not allowed to fight Thargoids. That's a totally interesting story, actually. I think it's totally unjustified. People ask me all the time, they say, Nate, why aren't you allowed to fight Thargoids? <laughs> well, you're on the end of my line and you're going nowhere. <laughs> 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 and that's when I lost my Thargoid hunting license. I'm fully convinced that the only reason they won't let me fly and fight Thargoids is because they're afraid I'll be too good. I fucking muted again. Did you see that thing die? I've never seen a Thargoid interceptor go down that quickly in my entire life. <laughs> Can you put a link for the lore of your timeline if there is one? There is not one yet. There's the lore video. That's, that's, uh, that's all we have for right now. There will be more. <laughs> At least you, were, you weren't using a flamethrower on them while on foot. There are no flamethrowers. Flamethrowers don't work in space. 
You need oxygen for flamethrowers to work, you silly billy. Not that we don't have a flamethrower on this ship, because we totally do have a flamethrower in the armory. <laughs> am I bloodthirsty for Thargoids? Well, now I am! I haven't been able to fight Thargoids since they took my Thargoid hunting license away. Because it turns out when you put shotguns on an anaconda and you kill the Thargoid in three seconds, apparently that's cheating. Because the way they want you to do it is they want you... Hang on. Because the way they want you to do it is they want you to fly around them in circles for, like, an eternity and be like, okay, shoot them. There's the heart. Kill the heart. Wait for their shield to go down. Shoot them. Kill the heart. Wait for the shield to go down. Do that again. And again. Now you can kill them. That's dumb! That's dumb! I hate that. I hate that so much. Why do I have to play by the rules? It, 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 it shouldn't be that fucking complicated. Why can't we just... Why can't we just be like... And they're dead. What difference does it make how it gets dead? The point is, it's dead! <laughs> uh, Elite Dangerous is a completely different universe, though. It could be worse. At least we're not, you know, playing EVE Online. Eve online. <laughs> uh, uh, next question. Or do we want to move on? Is there anything new coming to Elite Dangerous? And they just had an update. Elite Dangerous just had an update like yesterday. There's a new Thargoid ship. That's another thing about Thargoids? What the hell is up with this? They're getting all these new ships. When do we get new ships? But yeah, the, 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 the update was yesterday. They, uh, it's the Thargoid Scythe. More interested in the setting for Nate Cooper now. Well, that's great because there's an entire show Bible. Where did I get the helmet and clothes? Okay, the coat I bought. Mars is still kind of chilly. We haven't really figured out the temperature yet. Uh, so, yeah, I bought the coat. I splurged on the coat, actually, a little bit because uh, you know, it's it, it was a nice coat. And it got me through the war. So, like, I've had this coat for nine years, and it's still beautiful. Beautiful coat. Uh, the helmet. This was army surplus. Because where else are you going to get military equipment when you're a civilian? It also doubles as my scooter helmet. But yes, the scooter is on the ship. It's in the cargo bay. <laughs> That's where the... There's like a ramp over there, by the way. In the cargo bay. Folds down to the back of the ship. And yeah, that's how we get in and out. Any notable industries on Mars? Yeah. Turns out... The dirt... On Mars... 
You can make that into all sorts of stuff. Like water and glass. We have a very large sand industry here on Mars, which has been flourishing ever since Earth started running out of sand. What inspired you to create all of the mind shows? And also, someone already asked my confirmed kill count, and the answer is, I don't know. We have not been keeping track, and I stopped keeping track after 80. <laughs> anyway, uh, the that mind series show um, question, technically not movie-related, so I guess I could answer that. Um... Yes. I wanted to make the Mind series because that was the trend at the time. And I stuck with it because I'm stubborn. Earth running out of sand? Yes. You don't know about this? Even by your guys' standards, 2023, you guys are running out of sand. Did you know that? There's an interesting story for you. You might like this. There was a resort in, I think, Bermuda. Wonderful place. I, 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 went, I went to Bermuda once. Fantastic place. There was a resort in, I think, Bermuda. Where they were set to open. And overnight, I have no idea how they did this. To this day, nobody knows how they did this. Here I am over 600 years later. I can't tell you how they did this. Some guy stole all the sand. The whole beach. He stole all the sand. Each and every single grain. Nobody knows how they did it. This is a real thing. It happened. You can look this up. <laughs> look up the story of the man who stole a beach. An entire beach. This is real. This is not a joke. Would I lie to you? I would probably not lie to you. Why? Nobody knows why. Nobody knows why they did it or where the sand went. They stole an entire beach's worth of sand. <laughs> what is his purpose? The steel sand, apparently. Overnight, an entire sand. I don't know. I don't know how they did it. Nobody does. You must really like sand. Despite the fact that it's coarse, rough, and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Hey. I like sand. Oh, plot twist. Nate Cooper likes sand. Didn't see that coming. He hates desert planets, but he likes sand. It's almost like I grew up on a sand planet. Okay, it's not a sand planet. We have grass. I have touched grass on Mars. There is grass on Mars. I, in fact, I believe a wise man once said during the terraforming process on Mars, we can now touch grass on Mars. True quote. <laughs> That is not a true quote. It is in my universe, but don't, don't actually. You want a real quote? Here's a real quote. If you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. Who was that guy? Why am I blanking on that guy's name? He was awesome. 
It was a. Uh, 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 you know, I'm just going to type that in. It's on the tip of my tongue. Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan said that. How many total planets and solar systems are there in your time? Well, crossing over to the next galaxy still takes a really, 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 really long time. Like, that's cryosleep levels of distance still. So really, we just hang around the Milky Way, so... How many stars are in the Milky Way? How many stars are in the Milky Way around your time? It, doesn't, it hasn't been that long. On a cosmic scale of things, it hasn't actually been that long. About 100,000 million. 100,000 million. <laughs> Which is not a number that I have ever heard of. So let's just say 1 to 400 billion. Space is big. I mean, like you will not believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. I mean, you think it's a long walk down the street to get to the drugstore, but that's just peanuts compared to space. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. And there's still so much out there. Like, we stand on the shore of a vast cosmic ocean. Recently, we've waded out a little, and the water seems inviting. Carl Sagan. <laughs> How many colonized systems does humanity have? Now, define colonized. Because there's God knows how many tiny outposts. Like, we're at the point where if someone wants to set up an outpost on a planet, they just go there and they set up that outpost. Did you guys find aliens yet? Yes, of course. Of course we found aliens. I'm totally not crushing on one right now. No, I said I'm not. I give. Anyway, <laughs> how much of it have you explored? Um, all of it. Yeah, we got a pretty good map of the Milky Way. It's pretty good. Every now and then, well, obviously, you know, there are some discrepancies. Every now and then, a star blows up. But that's just the natural order of things. Were they friendly? Yes, of course. They helped us win the war. Right? Between the robots, the fish people, the plant people, and the wolves, and the penguins... I told you, we have a pen there's a penguin on board. Penguin with a gun. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot out there. Don't even get me started with the mushroom people. Those guys are crazy. Whew. Anyway. Most importantly, are they hot? It depends on what you're into. Like, that is subjective. That That is absolutely subjective. <laughs> Any, anybody else? Because, uh... There are a couple other announcements, but they're not, like, show-related. It's just more pertaining to what we're going to be doing. Like, with the streams and stuff. Like, I've already said that when, how crazy to be exact, you don't want to know. 
And you definitely don't want to go partying with those guys because they are insane. They got like this drink. I, I, I don't know how to describe the taste of it. I don't know what it is. I swear I was drinking Axe Cologne. <laughs> Uh, what is this? The game of Stellaris? Uh, Stellaris is crazy. I can't get into Stellaris. It's too... Well, first of all, it's too grand strategy. Second, it's expensive. What rooms of the ship do you plan to show on later on? Well, we're going to be playing D&D &D in the cargo bay. That's kind of where the den ended up. They... It's actually kind of cool... They uh, found a corner of the cargo bay, stacked up a bunch of crates to make, like, you know, sort of a miniature makeshift room. And that's where they have the D&D &D table. At some point, you guys might see the bridge. The canteen. Maybe the CIC. Wait, what? Okay, I can't show you guys the CIC. There's, like, this really... What? What? I'm not going to go into too much detail. Look, just trust me. There's like this really cool computer we have in there. It's really, really cool. But um, right now it's better if we don't let people know it exists. Does Lego still exist in the future? Yes, of course Lego still exists in the future. Why would Lego not exist in the future? <laughs> Was Earth effectively ruled by corporations? As a matter of fact, yes, Viper, it was. Hit the nail right on the head there. I mean, there was a government, but they had way less say in what was going on. The corporations kind of took over. It wasn't a megacorp yet. But when the corporations have this overfunded military force, yeah, you can tell why we went to war over this. Are there any former crew members? We lost an entire squad uh, at one point, yes. Because we had to blow shit up, and they stayed behind to actually blow that shit up. It was, a, it was another mega laser. It's always a mega laser. Every single time they need some kind of super weapon, it's always, always, always a mega laser. That's their go-to super weapon every single time. Except that one time where they used a uh, device to uh, destabilize the planet and make every volcano on the planet explode. Also earthquakes. That was a fun one. Personally, personally, if you want a really good super weapon, just get a giant asteroid. Just throw an asteroid at somebody. Go ballistic on them. It is a giant rock. And in my experience, those giant rocks are very, very difficult to get rid of once you get them going fast enough. So says every single movie about a meteor ever made. That's all you need. All you need to do is throw a rock at somebody. Just make that rock big enough, put some engines on it, and point it at the point it at what you want to not be there anymore. Like that is the fastest way to neutralize an entire planet. Which I have not done. I have never done that. Relax. I'm not a genocidal maniac. Okay, I was the one trying to blow up the super lasers, okay? Every time it's a mega death laser, though. Well, actually, 
they kind of liked to go back and forth between Mega Death Laser and Super Giant Fleet of Ships. Mega Death Laser, Super Giant Fleet of Ships, Mega Death Laser, slightly smaller fleet of ships, Mega Death Laser, back to the big fleet. And that's when the Mars Fleet Crisis happened. There'll be more about the Mars Fleet Crisis further down the line. I need um, more information in our archives to be declassified before I can tell you guys about that. If I get hired on your ship, I'm either gunnery person or mechanic. Well, you can become a member of our away team. Just gotta join the channel membership. I think there's a button for that. I don't know. Go find it. <laughs> you got. You, you kind of gotta go find that one. Did we ever get into mega structures like moon-sized space stations? Oh, for the love of God. You're one of those people, huh? One of those guys that wants uh, the really big space stations the size of a planet. Do you have any idea how expensive those are? There was one time some rich billionaire, well, bi billionaire doesn't really cover it. He was more like a quintillionaire asshole who said he was going to build the sun ring. He did not get very far. No, we don't have gigastructural engineering. That stuff is expensive. Catastrophically expensive. Christ, it's only been like 650 years. 634, actually. Ocean cities made of converted oil platforms. Yeah, we have those. We have those on, we have those on Mars, actually. They're cool. Artificial beaches and... I, I vacationed on one once. It, it was awesome. Anyway, uh... How did the mega corporations manage to overthrow the government? Technically, they did not overthrow the government, but it was a lot of really convenient lobbying and... You know how Disney works? Kind of bends the rules in their favor? Yeah, imagine that, but a lot more. Now it's on a galactic scale, and it's awful. <laughs> Those giant laser weapons are probably the reason why the USCM lost the war. Okay, this isn't how it went down, but I like to imagine that just every now and then, they're like, let's build another space laser. But John, didn't we just build a space laser? But this one will be a bigger space laser. That's a really good idea. And then they fund it. <laughs> uh, space lasers. Everybody loves space lasers. <sighs> what do you do on the away team? Uh, you go away. Like, off the ship, onto planets, you run around and do stuff. Sometimes you shoot people. Sometimes you collect plants. Sometimes you deliver cargo. It's whatever we're doing on that planet at any given time. That's an away team. <laughs> do the robots have gigastructure tech? I think you seriously underestimate just how many resources is required to build a gigastructure like that. We're talking multiple solar systems worth of resources. 
What's the biggest space laser they made so far? I'm gonna be real with you guys. They had Death Star. They had Death Star. But kind of, sort of not. They, I mean, they had Death Star, but it wasn't a Death Star. It was on a planet. Try to imagine... I'm using Star Wars as an analogy. Try to imagine a planet, but they just built the laser. Not friggin' uh, Star Killer base. Just the laser. Death Star? Yes, Death Star. That is a technical term that we use. Death Star 1 or Death Star 2? Uh, 1? The one that actually worked? Yeah, they had Death Star. They had a planet-killing laser mounted on a planet. Yes, they had a planet-killing laser mounted on a planet. Blew it up. That was probably my biggest explosion. There's just a crater back there. <laughs> there is just a crater. We should go there sometime. <laughs> yeah, we should fly over there sometime. Look at the crater. The big, 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 big crater. Would have just dropped some bombs down the laser ports. Oh, for, okay. Do you really think they're dumb enough to have the biggest weakness for their biggest laser ever built to be a 3x3 three three exhaust vent that you could just drop a bomb down? No, we had to try a little bit harder than that. <laughs> Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna shift away from the Q and Q and A here now. How many species went extinct when you Swiss cheese the planet? Oh, don't worry, the planet was uninhabited. The planet, God rest its soul, was an ice ball. So, yeah, the microbes probably didn't like it very much, but. Uh, Yeah, there were a lot of USCM casualties. That's about it. So, credit where credit is due. At least they put it somewhere remote. <laughs> now, I would like to talk about something. but I would like to shift away from... Uh, from uh, the Q&A now, and I would like to talk about something that's near and dear to all of us. What do you mean by ice fall? No, ice ball. Ice ball. Sorry if uh, that was... <laughs> Sorry if uh, you misunderstood there, but yeah, ice ball. It was an ice planet. Now, you know me, I like ice planets as much as the next guy, but... <sighs> Had to blow that one up! But anyway, uh, anyway, now we are shifting away from the Q&A, please, because, uh, there is something that, uh, that we need to talk about. I'm Mr. G. It's so funny, don't worry. Anyway, anyway, uh, yes, we need to talk about something, uh, that's, uh, that pertains to uh, some of the streaming that we're going to do. Uh, I already told you that we're going to have the Lego stream. Where we're going to build a Lego set. For the first one, a Vespa. We're doing the Lego Vespa. 
obviously. <laughs> um, but also, on top of that... Oh yeah! We're doing VR! God, that's loud. Okay, that, that, that one's always loud. That song is always the loudest. But yeah, we're doing VR! I finally figured out a way for us to do the VR streams that I've so desperately wanted to do all these years. And we've already got a whole load of games lined up. Yes, we're doing Half-Life Alex. Stop asking. Nobody asked? Well, you were gonna. You were going to ask. <laughs> that set is super old. That set is retro. But I, but I see what you're saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a fantastic uh, lineup of... Uh, fantastic lineup of VR games lined up. Uh, yes, we are playing Half-Life Alex. Please stop asking. Yes, we will play Boneworks. But the first one that I kind of want to play, uh, Star Wars Squadrons, so that we can do, uh, so that we can do something this month. I think Star Wars Squadrons would be a really good fit. What VR headsets do I have? I have two VR headsets. Technically three, but the other one is hanging from some wires in the CIC, and uh, that's really not used for gaming, but yeah. But yeah, I have two VR headsets. The first one is the classic HTC Vive, and the second one is the Vive Cosmos. Now, the Cosmos is the one that we're going to be using because the Cosmos has uh, the higher resolution. And actually, here in the future, we have the Cosmos 5. I can't afford the Cosmos 5, so we're just using the regular Cosmos. Maybe one day. Anyway. <laughs> what about Bone Lab? Well, if, if we finish Bone Works, yes, we'll probably do Bone Lab. Right now, I'm looking at the VR list and realizing there is not a lot of VR games that take place in space. At some point, we gotta play that Medal of Honor game in VR, though. At some point, we've gotta play that. Uh, we've got... Two accounting games, but I don't think we're allowed to play those because Justin Roiland royally screwed up. No pun intended, but the pun came out nonetheless. Uh, <laughs> yes, we're playing Half-Life Alex. don't worry. Hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. We can shoot some guns. Uh, I expect you to die... That's the name of the game. I wasn't I wasn't uh, I wasn't expecting you guys to die. And also we could play No No Man's Sky VR. If No Man's Sky ever starts working. It's an angry moment. We should have the Yeah. We should be angry about this. Because No Man's Sky doesn't work. I don't know why No Man's Sky doesn't work, but No Man's Sky doesn't work. <sighs> Planning on picking up a Vive soon. Vive is good. Never get the Oculus. It's owned by Facebook. Facebook is evil. Even in the future, I can tell you Facebook is evil. They're evil. Oh. <laughs> 
Uh, and this is not me. Okay, this next bit here. This is not me um, ending the stream. This is just a segue into our next little announcement. Now, I've kind of talked about this already, so it's not an official announcement. Well, actually, this is the official announcement, but uh, the news has already been out in the open. But before that, just real quick. Now, this is a lead-in. I'm not ending. Just tomorrow, we're playing Prey. Tomorrow, we're playing uh, Prey. I thought this would be a really good game for us to get into the sci-fi mood. It's a game filled with great ideas. Uh, we're going to be playing uh, Starfield a lot. So, um, yeah, I figured we should start getting on Bethesda's case about it. Uh, but uh, that's not the announcement. The announcement uh, is that uh, I'm bringing something... Uh, we're bringing something back. We're bringing something back that uh, kind of went the way of the wayside. Let's see, what's on this one? I could pick any of these. Uh, let's just go with this one. It's an Oktoberfest one, but, uh, yeah, we're, uh, that's way too large. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Do you guys remember way, way back when, uh, Head Hunter Productions would stream three games in one stream? We would have, um... We would have one game at the beginning. We would have another game that would we that we would come back to every now and then, and then we had this uh, third game that was usually multiplayer. We're bringing this format back on Friday. Now this isn't going to be every Friday. It's not going to be every Friday because I can't do it every Friday. But it is going to be whatever I am able. And I specifically asked for a whole bunch of time off this week so that we could do it. So that we could really get into uh, this character. Basically, Prey is a horror game. Uh, yes and no. Like, yes, it's kind of a horror game. But also, no, horror games don't scare me. I am a really, really tough audience when it comes to horror games. Like, you have to really try to scare me. Like, let me, uh, pull out my horror games list. Yes, I have a section. It's on my Steam library, which, by the way, totally stole it from Hunter. Totally stole the game library from Hunter. It's mine. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 Dead Space. I play Dead Space on the regular. It's not scary. Iron Lung. Little uneasy, but not scared. Jump scares don't count, by the way. Those are just cheap. Uh, Hello, Neighbor. That was more frustrating than scary. Ghostbusters the video game. Not a horror game. It just fits with the Halloween theme really good. Evil Within. Not scary. Evil Within 2. Not scary. Doom 3. It's a lot of jump scares. That don't count. <laughs> By the way, we're going to play Doom 3 because it's on Mars. <laughs> it's already confirmed. Uh, Lost in Vivo, not scary. Mortuary Assistant, lots of jump scares, but ultimately, again, jump scares don't count. Not scary. Okay, we played Mists of Aiden like once. Funny because Mark is currently making an Iron Lung movie. I did see that. That's cool. You know, technically, Iron Lung takes place on another planet. No, 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 no. 
I feel like I feel like Iron Lung has had its time in has had its time in the limelight. Like we did it on the gaming channel and we did it for Halloween. I think it's I think it's time to uh to just let it rest. Like let Mar let Marky Mark do his movie, but uh I think it's good. It came, it did its thing, it was awesome, but let's not do it to death, you know? That's what I'm thinking. Oh yeah, no, no, I'm going to see the movie, obviously, but just let it fade out. Unlike Five Nights at Freddy's, which refuses to go away. Actually, riddle me this, my guys. I think we have some FNAF fans in uh, in the chat. I know that they're on the Discord. I see them all the time. Riddle me this, my guys. Why is it called Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach if the game only takes place over one night? Also, why is the original game... I've done my research, guys, so... Yeah. Why is it called Five Nights at Freddy's? The original Five Nights at Freddy's. Why is it called Five Nights at Freddy's? If I work five nights and then I get overtime and I have to work a sixth night. This franchise has been flawed since day one. Fact. <laughs> Iron Lung equals Titan Simulator. Whoa! Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> Alright, that's another thing we're trying to do, is we're trying to clean up our image. We're not going to be all, ha-ha, billionaires died. No. Okay? People died. We're trying to clean up our image a little bit. Like, come on. People died. I have seen the horrors of war. All right, I forgot we're playing this. <laughs> That's also happening this month. I never got into Breathage. But uh, they're making a Breathage 2. I didn't even know they were making a Breathage 2. But apparently they're making Breathage 2, so now we're going to go back and play Breathage 1. Now, I know some of you are probably wondering, what is Breathage? Well, Breathage is basically Subnautica, but in space. Should be pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, it's Subnautica in space. Who doesn't love Subnautica? For those of you who came in late, we're playing Subnautica. <laughs> uh, wouldn't be much of a surprise if it was called Six Nights at Freddy's. Do we have to have plushies for it, though? What happened to the music? Never heard of that game? A lot of people say they've never heard of Breathage. <laughs> there are some more obvious ones, too. Like, obviously, we're playing some Mass Effect. I figure we could start on Mass Effect 1. Could, seeing as how the gaming channel finished Mass Effect 1, like, obviously, we're going to play through all three. But seeing as how the gaming channel has finished Mass Effect 1, I figure we could start some Mass Effect 1, like, this month. This is sci-fi month! We are playing sci-fi games and space-related games all month. 
doesn't have to be sci-fi. Like, we could boot up some Kerbal Space Program if Kerbal Space Program 2 gets its act together, obviously, but still. That, I suppose... Uh, I suppose this is a good time to mention we're also going to be playing Andromeda. Because contrary to what people think, it is a good game. I like Andromeda. I liked Andromeda for what it was. Like Most people at this point have accepted that Andromeda is a spin-off game. Is cyberpunk considered sci-fi? That is an important question. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Cyberpunk, um, it's not sci-fi enough for us. Like, I think for it to be on this month, it has to have some kind of space element. However, don't, don't, don't uh, be disheartened just yet. Because I do have plans to play Cyberpunk 2077. The version 1.0 of Cyberpunk 2077. The release version. I want to get a pirate copy of the release version. Like, obviously I'm going to buy the game. I'm not a scumbag. But after I buy the actual game, I want to go on to uh, a torrent website, get the 1.0 version of the game, and play that. And we're going to laugh about it. All the bugs. All the glitches. All the funny fun times. It's going to be cool. <laughs> but that's probably not going to happen for a little bit. Because we got like... Wow. We've got like three months of content lined up. Like, there's this month where we're playing all this sci-fi stuff. And then September is only Starfield. It is only Starfield all month long. You'll also have Anime Night, but only Starfield. God, you don't even have Mystery VTube Theater that month. The... Uh, the horse has informed me that Mystery VTube Theater will be back this month, but September, Cow is doing a model reveal, so he's going to do that. I actually am very curious to see that model, by the way. They have not shown me. Um, but that... But that should be fun. Model reveals are always a big deal for those of you who are not in the biz. <laughs> I mean, you saw how, bi how big of a deal this one was. I teased this model on Twitter, which I'm still going to call it Twitter, the night that I got the model. Just showed off a bunch of toggles and all that, but this is a, this is definitely the first time you've heard it with a voice. <laughs> what else are we streaming this month? I have a thousand Starfield thumbnails. There are too many Starfield thumbnails. This is a very nice one, but there are too many Starfield thumbnails because we're going to be straight. We got a lot of Starfield. <laughs> I've been asking people for uh, game suggestions on Discord. Which, by the way, join our Discord. Link is down below. So is the Twitter. Actually, you guys should definitely check out the description below. Because there is a lot down there. And we worked super hard on that video description. <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom has you launching Koroks into space. That doesn't count. We could play Alien Isolation this month. We are playing Alien Isolation in October. 
because that's our third month of content that we have lined up, is uh, Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest 2023. It's real. And I'm not going to lie. I don't know if we're going to have the giveaway. Because I don't really have an effective way of distributing keys on YouTube. YouTube doesn't have a whisper system where we could just send the keys over. So, I am open to suggestions on this one. How would you distribute game keys to someone who wins a game key on a YouTube giveaway? Answers over to uh, theheadhunter44 at gmail.com. You can uh, type one right now or leave your answer in the comments. I totally forget if these things actually have a comment section. Email or Discord. The Discord link is down there. There's a Discord link in the video in in the stream description. There's a there's a Discord link. <laughs> My house was a, was unique horror. We might play my house. I might try my house. We could play the original Doom? Uh, yeah, we could play the original Doom. I don't see why we wouldn't play the original Doom. There's already plans for us to play Doom. It's on Mars. What's your favorite Mass Effect game? Ah, it's a two-part question. This is actually a very important question, too. Okay, so favorite Mass Effect game. Well... Favorite is two, obviously. I did buy the Legendary Edition. That's what the gaming channel is playing through right now. I love two. Two is the best one. Three is not as bad as people say it is. Three is not as bad as people say it is. Neither is Andromeda. Andromeda is good for what it is, which is a Mass Effect spinoff. It's still pretty okay. I like what they were trying to do with that one. Mass Effect 1 is just built different. So 2 is best. 2 is best. And as for uh, the second part of that question. Who the hell likes Caden? <laughs> uh... Well, Garrus is obviously the best character, obviously, but in terms of romance options, I always play male Shep, so... Tally. I'm a sucker for Tally Zora, guys. She's just so dang cute. Why are these toggles not working? There they go. <laughs> I'm a sucker for Tally Zora. And in October, we can play house, my house .wad. Yes, that's probably going to be an October thing. That's probably going to be an October thing. The, everyone is asking me to play my house .wad. Everyone's talking about my house .wad. So yeah, we're probably going to play my house .wad. In October. Not right now. And then there's the Tally's face meme. <laughs> you know, they changed it in Legendary Edition, right? They actually went back and fixed it. Just a little nod to us Tally fans. Because she is the best. <laughs> Not the only one who romance Tally. Oh, God, no. Tally is popular. 
Tally's awesome! <laughs> Did you see that video in Mass Effect? Uh, it was Mass Effect 3. They're at, they're at a tower. And he's got um, Tally and um, the new guy. Um, what was the new guy's name? He's the most forgettable one. Well, either way, she's like, we need a tech expert to uh, bring the uh, turrets offline or something. And he sends the dumb guy, who actually has a special built-in animation for this particular... For this particular action, and he kicks it? They're like, what the fuck? Tally's sitting right there. <laughs> Uh, it's a fun game, but it's gonna—it's it's gonna be real fun when we actually get to get to stream it. Yeah, but we're starting with Mass Effect One. Mass Effect One is just built different. It's not bad. It's okay. It's just built different. Also, for the record, for the record. I want this on record. Before we stop talking about Mass Effect. For the record. Mako is better than the Hammerhead. Okay? Okay, everybody? Alright, I'm the, I, 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 I am a sci-fi VTuber and there is my opinion on that. The Nomad is okay. Nomad's, like, somewhere in the middle. <laughs> but before any of that... I said we had a three-game lineup this week. And indeed we do. So, let me introduce you guys to my new weekly thing. This will be going up on the Twitter and the community tab here on YouTube. And I'm going to try to get this out every Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a schedule. We have an actual schedule thing now. The horse didn't have this because uh, his scheduling was crap. Uh, but yeah, this was done by the lovely Ghosty Purs on Twitter. But yeah, we have a uh, we have a proper schedule now. This is this week's schedule. See, on Monday we had the not graduation stream. And yesterday, we had all-day stream prep for today. And yes, it was all day. A lot of work went into this. And I think and I think it's gone really, really well. I haven't even shown you guys everything. We got a cool new end screen. <laughs> yes, it does look amazing. I said, I asked them if we could get something similar to our home screen. This is what they came up with. And they did a super good job. It took them a while, but they did a really, really, really good job on it. But yeah, uh, Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have three games. We And uh, yeah, we're playing Space Crew for our first game. A lot of people have been asking me to play Space Crew. It's the sequel to Bomber Crew. In fact... I think the gaming channel did Space Crew. The thumbnail's around here somewhere. Give me one sec. H I. There's a lot of eyes. S. There it is. The thumbnail for Space Crew. That's the horse. Did not think we'd see him again. Why is Kermit and Liam on the thumbnail, you may ask? I implore you to go watch the video and find out. 
It's actually super funny. <laughs> look, look, you have to watch the video for, for all of the context, but all you need to know, all you need to know is that it's not easy being green. That's the first game we're playing on Friday. The second game, I'm once again bringing something back. So, way, way back when we were streaming on Livestream.net, all the way back in ancient times, 2012, <laughs> All the way back in those ancient times, we started a long, 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 long playthrough of every single Ratchet & Clank game ever made. We played through the first one. It was awesome. We played through the second one. It took longer, but it was awesome. Played through the third one. Great. We played through Deadlock on the highest difficulty. We played through the two really, really bad ones. We played Tools of Destruction, we played Quest for Booty, Quest for Booty only took one stream, and then we played Kraken Time. Then we stopped uh, streaming regularly at All for One. Well, no longer. I am reviving this playthrough. So we're going back to finish All for One, and then we're going to play Full Frontal Assault and Into the Nexus. And the 2016 game. And of course we're playing Rift Apart. Because holy crap, I love Rift Apart. That's a great game. Ratchet and Clank was my childhood game on the PS2. Same. We're cut from the same cloth, Craig. Absolutely cut from the same cloth. That was my jam. I have been playing Ratchet and Clank since it was a demo on a jam pack disc. There's a throwback you never you thought you'd never hurt here. And then our third game, which is normally have we ever done a burnout three stream? As a matter of fact, we did. We did that on I think it okay, so what I like to do I gotta open up another folder for this. What I like to do whenever I get a new console is I like to, uh, hang on, I like to do a console debut stream. This was the one for the PS4. Now normally these streams have a, if it's a PlayStation debut, normally it's going to have a Ratchet and Clank game. I'm trying to find the old PlayStation one. Uh, we did do Burnout 3 on... Uh, there were two PlayStation 2 streams. I forget which one we did it on, but yeah, we did... We did play Burnout 3. Anyway, moving back. Debut, VTube, the Nate folder. <laughs> there is a lot of stuff in the Nate folder, by the way. There's still stuff I gotta show you, actually. Anyway, the third game we're playing on Friday, and I'm... And, 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 and I need to tell you this because I keep getting distracted. It's a game called Marauders. Very interesting game, Marauders. This is sci-fi. Sci-fi punk. I would say because we're running around in space with an MG42. Or an STG44. Or an MP40. Or an M16. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's this alternate reality World War II where the war just never ended. 
Now we're in space. <laughs> I don't think it was World War II, actually. I think it's an alternate reality World War I where the war just never ended and now we're in space. It just never stopped. But yeah, it's that's gonna be... Uh, me and some old friends are doing it. It's me, Octi, and Shane. Some of you guys may remember Shane. We just played Raft over on Twitch for Shark Week. And Octi, some of you guys may remember Octi. Some of you guys may not remember Octi. Uh, he was the guy who was uh, originally going to be DMing uh, the Adia campaign. Now he's just uh, the guy we yell at in Elite Dangerous because he bought a fleet carrier. <laughs> he bought a fleet carrier, guys. Can you believe that? Can you believe this guy? And, and, and I look at it and I'm like, you are not ready for that kind of commitment. And he's like, fuck you, watch me. He was not ready for that kind of commitment. He was not. <laughs> We're going to have some fun here, guys. It's a whole lot of fun. Hey, you know we still got a Minecraft server? Yeah. Did you know that? Play.headhunterpd is still a thing. Play.headhunterpd.com. That's the full server URL. That's still a thing. You can still play on that server. Because that's the server I will be on. With my... Cool new Minecraft skin! What? Yes. This is a thing. Look at that! Look at this dude! <laughs> Come on, that looks amazing! Oh, God. I've already showed this off on, uh... already showed this off on, uh, Twitter. It looks fantastic. <laughs> How's Stove doing? Now that's a name I have not heard in a long time. Long time. Isn't it offline currently? No, it is going offline in a little bit because our host is moving house. But it will be back. Are there going to be any more streams in that server? That is the plan. We're going to stream Minecraft at some point. But yeah, this is a custom made model. Really nice custom made model. I commissioned this from someone. Let me get the name. There are people who will make Minecraft skins for you. Did you know that? Uh, this is Yondi Art. Two E's on Fiverr. There were a lot of things done on Fiverr. Like, for example, uh, G4 VTuber did that. They gave us an awesome scene transition. And that is, um, and, th and that is, uh, that is staying. That's new. That's cool. That's really kick-ass. Look at that. I have no idea how to make one of those. It's freaking awesome. <laughs> the trailer, by the way, our, um, our, uh, our, our character trailer was done by Mavworks with an M. M-A-U-V-E works. So go check them out too. They are awesome. Everyone 
worked super hard on all of this. Now, I, I know we're kind of reusing uh, the same backdrops that we had for uh, the old guy, Hunter. Uh, they were, the, the, these were made by Nina. That's, uh, Roju Ganina on Twitter. And yes, I will still call it Twitter. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, she also did the rehashes for our start screen and BRB screen. I know what you're thinking. Wait, what changed? Well, it's not a horse anymore. It's now an astronaut. Same on the start screen. Oh, there's the transition again. <laughs> God, I'm excited now. I've been excited about this for like two months, but now I'm really excited to actually start. We were going to play a game tonight, but now it's nine o'clock and I'm super hungry and super tired. You can tell I'm losing steam. We're not going to go too much longer. Don't worry. So I, I just have a couple more things to announce, like the shorts. Um, we're, we're gonna start getting back into YouTube shorts, like actually committing to it. Stream highlights, some actual custom stuff. That thing you saw about the Thargoids, that's gonna be turned into a YouTube short. That's going out tomorrow, actually. Some of the videos you saw tonight, the lore video is already available to watch. Uh, the oddity teaser is also out. Uh, people are already watching it. Oh, there's actually a comment on it. Looking forward to this, honestly, seems like it'll be hilarious. It will be hilarious. Like, come on. Hunter has a show. Matt has a show. I should have a show. That's how, that's how you succeed on this channel, is you have to have a show. That's how that cute little deer girl is succeeding, is that everybody loves the deer girl. What's the Minecraft skin for? Minecraft. The Minecraft skin is for Minecraft. Because we're showing off everything at this point. You haven't noticed we're running out of things to show off. <laughs> we talked about the VR streams. We talked about, we did the Q&A. We talked about the ship. You want to know the true origins of that ship, by the way? It was staring you right in the face the whole time. It's that stupid little Lego model that's been sitting on the desk since forever. I told them I wanted it in this shape. So yeah, anyone who was concerned that um, there are no Legos here in the future, worry no longer. <laughs> That's it. That's the last thing I have to show off. It's, uh, yeah. <sighs> anyway. So that's me. I have a gun. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. So again, tomorrow... We're going to jump right into the games. We're going to have some fun. We're going to play some Prey, which I still need to install, but that's not too big of an issue. Are they still expensive? A lot of the stuff that went into this rebrand re was very expensive. The mod This model alone, $300. Before you rested stuff, can you give me those ship room pixel art renders? Alright, let's uh 
squeeze on back over to this screen. <laughs> okay, there is one image of the ship in-game. It's based on a starbound ship. And the map and the ma and the ship map is kind of based off the same exact thing. Let me see if I could zoom in on that, make that a little bit bigger for you. I could probably just post this image on Discord. But this is more or less home. Yeah, you'll see more of it, don't worry. <sighs> anyway. I gotta go, uh... Hit up the lounge. <laughs> see what's left over in the fridge. We have a fridge. Big fridge. Nice fridge. <laughs> okay. So there's one more thing I want to try. And that is YouTube has a raid function now. How do I raid? Also require a, star a copy of Starfield. Yes, yes. Requested a copy of... Ah, oh, okay. Oh, you requested it. Okay. I thought I thought you were uh, one of the two that won a copy of Starfield. Which, by the way, you're still getting it. Don't worry. I have your contact info written down. You are still set to receive those keys. Okay. YouTube rolls out cross-channel live redirects, a new feature that allows streamers to send live viewers to other channels. How do I do it? Okay. Log into YouTube Studio. It's already done. Go to settings. Settings. Click on community. I think I have to... Alright, hang on. Under live redirects, enter specific channels you want to allow to redirect to yours. Okay, but how do I raid out? Just have to wait and see. Yes. Wait and see. This is only the beginning. We are just getting started. There is so much in store. So much. You know there's another D&D &D recap video coming. Yeah. And this one covers everything up past uh, Orzer. So a whole lot more than the first video. It's going to be nuts. And there's another little announcement for you guys. Okay, so that's how you enable. Okay. As you're about to end your stream, you choose which channel to send your viewers to. Okay. Click edit. Editing. Select customization. Redirect. Yes. Or I could send you guys to watch a video. Hmm. Let's see who we can redirect to. Hmm. -hmm. 
Oh, we got someone from Niji Sanji who's live. We got Rose me, but I'm pretty sure Rose is in another language. Yeah, I get those. Live volcano eruption in Iceland. <laughs> we could rate that. I didn't know I could send you guys to any video. Let me see who's live. Let me actually put a little bit of effort, in, effort into this and uh, see if we can find someone who's... What about, pr what about probably? Is she live? Probably not. Okay, so it's surprisingly hard to find people who are live. All right, so tell you what. We're going to raid... We're going to raid Hollow Live. Yeah, basic, I know. Like, really? Yeah. I'll get this properly set up later. Restricted privileges needed. Oh. We can't just redirect to Hollow Live. All right. Okay, screw it. We're going to redirect to one of my videos. <laughs> Let's see. What do I want you guys to watch? You know what? I'm going to link you guys back to the lore video. I'm going to link you guys back to the lore video so that uh, you can all go through it with a fine tooth comb looking for every single little tiny detail. No results. What? Why? I have no idea how this works. I have never used this feature before in my life. I don't know how to use it, so instead we're just going to end. Which is okay, because we have a cool new end screen. Anyway, I'm going to see you guys tomorrow for Prey. Thank you guys so much for coming. This has been amazing. This has been absolutely amazing. Stick around, because we're just getting started. This is the beginning of something awesome. That's the BRB screen. Oh well. <laughs>